What is up, bros? Me, Josh here. In today's video, we're going to break down the best ships per class for clan battles and which ones will give you the best chance of success in the long run to getting towards that Stalingrad win in the Typhoon League. Let's dive in and break it down. So with the rules of clan battles, it's 7v7, one battleship only. So with that one class and one type of battleship, it was this will be kind of a surprise on what I think is the strongest battleship. As we all know, the Conqueror has just shit World of Warships, and it is an absolute beast. And I even said it before clan battles hit that the Conqueror is going to be the go-to and the must-have battleship when it comes to clan battles. But what I've actually seen is the Montana being the strongest in a chosen battleship for most clans in the higher tier clan battles. So why is it that? It has the big shells, big, big shells, very, very stealthy and uh, very, very opportunistic. You're able to kind of hide behind islands and just lob those shells over. Uh, Montanas have been kind of controlling everything. It's just an awesome way to focus. The Conqueror, I haven't even seen a Conqueror yet, surprisingly or not. Um, the other day we played 10 plus games and not one Conqueror was used. It just seems like the alpha damage that the Conqueror takes is too much. It needs to go away for too long, and the Montana is just able to kind of just tank a bit better when it comes to this. And I mean, that's what we've seen in rank battles. Although the Conqueror has an insane heal, the Montana seems to be that longer-lasting, better tanking battleship that is needed and just more opportunistic and a bit more accurate, which is really what you want because battleships right now aren't kind of shooting all the time, but they're waiting for that one broadside on a cruiser because it's very cruiser-heavy season. And taking out that shot so the Montana is definitely the one go-to it's by far probably the most accurate battleship um, its ability to just kind of dunk on stuff very consistently 12 shells going out again it's all volume for these ships so Montana is definitely gonna be number one now although it's probably the strongest battleship when it comes to uh, random battles and stuff like that I think the Conqueror will be a, a pretty solid spot at number two the Conqueror is still insane it has great AP the HE is solid I'm surprised more clans aren't using it because if you have the ability a lot of the clans already have the Montana so a lot of people can use that I just think it's a better option overall but the Conqueror number two is gonna be a pretty solid choice um, fewer people are gonna have this ship so it's kind of the downside but if you do it does have the potential of just lighting things on fire and absolutely punishing those bro those bow in ships with its HE and ability to go undetected. Uh, I think Conqueror number two is going to be pretty solid uh, with its heal and everything. You just are going to be really, really, uh, especially with all the kind of high caliber cruisers that people are using at tier 10s, Conqueror will take some extra damage. So you have to be a bit more careful on the long run, but you will have the ability to still pump out a ton of damage and, and basically heal through it. So Conqueror number two, I think, is a pretty solid choice. I think a pretty easy choice at number three is the Amato. The Amato has the ability to lull pen. You are going to be going against a lot of Moskvas, a lot of Hindenburgs, a lot of Des Moines kind of bow inning against you. And if anything's going to lull pen these ships, it's going to be the Amato. The one downside is the Amato is a relatively fat ship, so it is pretty easy to set in. And one of the other things is the Amato only has nine shells towards basically all the other 12s going out. So they're going to be kind of mad most of the time you're going to be kind of a bow in with this ship but you still have the ability to, with the massive massive shells on this ship to just absolutely destroy bow in cruisers um being able to overmatch their their armor yamato at number three i think is pretty conservative um i've only seen a couple that have been uh effective in the long run still think it's not quite as good as the montana and the conqueror because of its potential to uh um with the lack of shells really going out per salvo still an awesome ship still going to be able to get really really effective um, a little bit higher detectability, which is kind of the downside, but still, the Yamato has the has the chance of getting that Yamato-esque salvo and just destroying something that isn't really giving an angle too much. Although it has the biggest health pool and, you know, the best secondaries when it comes, and of course sonar when it comes to tier 10s, I think the Kerferus is by far the worst battleship. It's the biggest battleship, I think it's one of the slower battleships and has one of the highest detectabilities. The the strengths of the ship are its secondaries, and you are just going to get absolutely burnt to the ground. Anytime we have played a Kerferus, we have actually just destroyed this ship. Uh, I just don't think it has the ability. It's just not as good. One downside is, I guess one upside is, down or upside, whatever you want to look at it, it is one of the ships you can rent for clan battles, so I guess that is good. You can rent it and use it, but uh, I think you're going to be going against... Uh, it's not as accurate as the Montana. Um, it's not as stealthy as, as the Montana or the Conqueror, and it's not going to get those crazy pens that the Yamato would. So I think it's pretty safe to say this is probably the worst battleship for Clan Wars. You can trust me, all these things can still be very effective in the long run. Um, just getting into those really competitive tiers in the Typhoon League and the other leagues like that. Uh, this, you're definitely going to have an uphill battle against all their battleships. Um, the Kerferus, I just think, is by far the worst battleship at uh, for Clan Wars. 
I'm not saying it's a bad ship at all, just the worst out of the four. The first season of Clan Battles has turned into a cruiser fest. With the limit of one battleship per team, you're only able to take one. And with how much radar is at tier 10 and sonar and everything, destroyers are harder and harder to play with most teams taking basically one um, destroyer, maybe two, some of them. Uh, if they're running more than that, it's just not worth it. Uh, cruisers are the go-to class for their ship. And by far, I think the Moskva is number one when it comes to this. Uh, most of the top teams running two, even three Moskvas with its potential to just radar the hell out of you at long range. Its ability to long range snipe you with the perfect dispersion, good rate of fire, amazing fire chance, big health pool. The Moskva is insane as well as its armor and high caliber shells. This thing is kind of the perfect cruiser as well as it being the skinniest tier 10 cruiser out there right now. So its ability to just bow in, use its front two guns and just absolutely obliterate you. Um, as well as it being relatively hard to shoot uh, if it is bow in because it is so skinny and its ability to avoid. Remember all cruisers can run hydro, so um, makes it even harder to play destroyers and you don't really need to run AA since there are really no planes in the long run. The Moscow I think is the best, it has the longest um, range radar which is very very strong for picking out that one two maybe three destroyers on a team mostly one or two so taking out the destroyer as fast as possible with the long range radar is very important because destroyers are playing very cautiously this season because there's only one and most teams are running two three maybe even more uh, radars on their team depending on what their their run is though so moscow i think is the one go to the number one uh cruiser for clan battles um it just is kind of the perfect storm that you want in a competitive play I think a pretty safe number two is the Hindenburg. This thing is absolutely insane. Since it's recent HE buff and the higher alpha damage it gets with this, um, this thing is pretty awesome. It's an amazing flanking ship um, with its with its ability to just pinpoint accuracy at long range, um, as well as this is probably the most dangerous ship close range with its ability to pump out eight torpedoes each side, as well as its turtleback armor, keeping it very safe from citadels at close range. The Hindenburg is right there with the Moskva. I just think since it has, it doesn't have radar, it's not quite as strong as the Moskva. Um, but this is the go-to. Moskvas and Hindenburgs are the one-two punch when it comes to clan clan battles. And I think easy having the best sonar when it comes to this. Is, it's an amazing ship. It can be very, very aggressive. It can be very, very tanky. And it does a great job at pumping out damage, surviving, basically doing everything you want in a cruiser. So Hindenburg, a close number two. I think if it had, you know, if, if the Moskva didn't have radar, this would be number one. But since the Moskva does, it kind of gets that little bump. So Hindenburg at number two, awesome, awesome choice. The Des Moines for me fights for third place, barely in my opinion, beating out the Zhao. Uh, the Des Moines, the reason it is in third place for me, even though I don't like taking more than one, this is a very situational ship. If you played ranked battles last season, the Cleveland was a very good ship if it could get into the right position and hold down an entire line. This is exactly what the, the Des Moines does. Close range battle, it, it's DPS besides the Hindenburg is, is almost untouchable um, because the Hindenburg does have the potential to get Torps out. If you take Torps out of the, the this scenario, nothing beats the Des Moines close range. Uh, uh, the Des Moines having the radar keeps it, I think, in third place. Um, it's good rate of fire. Um, it's sonar ability, definitely a radar. This thing is an absolute beast. Um, downside is broadside, of course, you're going to get smashed. And also one of the major downsides of this ship is the trajectory. Um, we ran into a game we lost probably because we were running to, uh, we ran to Des Moines in that game. And we just couldn't hit things at long range. Uh, a Hindenburg, a Moskva is just going to be the counter to the DM at long range if it is in the open. Your, your flight time on your shells at basically 15 plus kilometers is really, really tough to hit somebody that knows what they're doing. Des Moines, good ship, very situational. Um, I think it still holds because it is the second radar ship. It holds a third place spot, but it barely beats out the Zhao, in my opinion, um, for long, consistent damage. So Des Moines number three, I think, is still a solid choice. Be careful, though, with taking too many of these because you are going to run into some problems hitting stuff at long range. The Zao at number four, I think, is still pretty solid. You're starting to get into the ships that why take these because there are other better options. The Zao is still good. The lowest detection of any of the cruisers, I guess, besides the Minotaur. Um, the Zao is still an absolute beast. It's really, really good at pumping out alpha damage, but it really doesn't do too much better than the Hindenburg. It has a has a longer reload than the Hindenburg, um, has a worse sonar. The Torps are a bit longer, but that's really about it. Uh, not seeing too many Zao's, don't really see, if you have the ability to take the Hindenburg, it's not really needed. Still, this thing can pop out crazy damage, go undetected, and be a pain in the ass, especially if it's a flanking ship. 
of course with its ability to have run its troll armor and get those uh, eight kilometer torps that are basically going to kill anything within the range um, it's a really good ship i just think this tier 10 cruiser is the lineup is so competitive Zal gets bumped down all the way to, to in my opinion the fourth spot still very very good but if you have the hindenburg have the moskva even really have the des moines um, it's hard to take the Zhao over those three ships. So I hate to say it, the Henry IV, which is a ship I've actually been using a lot, this is a very, 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 very situational ship. The fastest of all the tier 10 cruisers. Um, it has insanely big shells, which can do a ton of damage. I've been having some success with this ship, and the reason is it's an amazing flanking ship, but really it's kind of a gimmicky ship, and it's just, in the long run, not going to have the potential power as, as like, let's say, the Hindenburg or even the Moskva. This thing is an insane speed. I believe it can get up to right around 45 knots with the speed flags, and this thing is an absolute beast at getting to that backup cap. What a lot of teams are doing is sending two ships to one cap, five ships to the other, and this is kind of the perfect ship for doing that because it's so fast, it's hard to hit, and it has the ability to go undetected and still pump out damage at a long range with a high rate of fire and high alpha damage. So this ship is very gimmicky, it's very situational. The thing that you want in clan battles though is you don't want situational ships, you want guaranteed ships that the Moskva and the Hindenburg are going to have. Um, the Henry, although very fun to play and very kind of troll to play, I just don't think it's going to have long-term success as being a very kind of role-specific ship like the Grozovoy kind of has, which kind of puts it at the bottom of the list. The Henry is going to be one of the weaker ships, although fun to play. Um, I don't think it's going to be able to hold up long run. So it's one of the weakest for sure, but still fun to play if you guys have the ability. If you guys even have this ship, give it a try. Just kind of run the flank and let me know what you guys think of that play style as well. Very fun play style. Super effective. I wouldn't, I wouldn't quite say that compared to other ships, but still fun to play. And sadly, one of the ships I have probably the most 200k plus damage games in, in the Minotaur. This thing has been affected by the smoke. Um, now, the smoke changes now. You won't really run into that with playing Clan Wars. But with it being one of... The, with it being the most fragile ship at Tier 10, and with how much radar is being used at Tier 10, the Minotaur is kind of the bottom of the barrel it has great potential but the risk reward for the ship is just not worth it like i said you want to go with the guaranteed strength of a ship not the potential and with the minotaur you have the potential with one radar just getting absolutely obliterated it's the only ship like that and really it's kind of tough to take this especially since there is a lack of cvs well there is no cvs in this this season of clan battles the minotaur in my opinion if it's all you have then use it but there's there's no way i think you can take this in the high competitive realm of clan battles you're just going to get absolutely obliterated fun ship an amazingly fun ship but really i just don't think it's strong enough to really take into the clan battles so minotaur at for clan battles sake is the weakest of all tier 10 cruisers so this first season of the clan battles has become a very challenging season for destroyers since the lack of cvs um Really, ships like the Gearing kind of loses some strength since it's one of the few that has AA. The Grows Voy is basically unplayable, and um, every ship is able to kind of run sonar. Well, they basically can run sonar, and with how much radar there is, it's very tough to get kind of close. So this is actually really, really close for me to picking the two. You're kind of running that defensive um, scanning for d uh, torpedoes, that kind of stuff, because most teams are going to be running one, maybe two. Most clans are sticking with one destroyer, and the one I've been seeing the most is the Gearing. I think the Gearing has consistently, um, for clan battles, been kind of the best. Even though the smoke change, you're relatively far enough away, you can stay still use that smoke. And the Gearing is going to have the best smoke of all the tier 10 destroyers. Um, its ability to then still pump out long-range torps, staying out of that radar range, makes it a great choice for the one destroyer. Most clans are going to have this, or most players are going to have this because the line's been out for so long. Still really, really good. Also, its ability to hide behind an island and use its arcs with a relatively high fire chance and high rate of fire for the ship. It's still going to be a tough season for destroyer mains because of uh, how much sonar there is and how much radar. So this is a good ship to use. I think the Z-52 is going to be a close second for this, but one or the other, those are definitely going to be the two standout ships. And I think Gearing is probably going to be the strongest for this season when it comes to Destroyers. So I think a very, very close number two is the Z-52. Um, the main thing is this thing is going to be able to scan best for torpedoes. So the downside about that is the less torpedoes there are, aka less Destroyers are on a team, this thing loses a bit of strength. Um, I think the Gearing is just better overall as being that really defensive Destroyer. You do have Sonar, which is actually really nice. 
Um, but this is a pretty tough one. You're barely outranging most of the radar, and even the mosque is going to snag you with your torpedo range. And really, the gearing does out detect you by just a small uh, slice of detection range. Um, the Z52, though, is still very, very strong. If you do smoke up or are in smoke or even are shooting broadside against the target, you can absolutely shred it with AP. Um, nothing's going to shred something kind of better AP than the Z52. Maybe the cab is up there. But um, German DD is, is a pretty close second, in my opinion. Um, there just really aren't that many slots for destroyers, so this class is definitely kind of tough to bring in the long run. But the Z52, really close second. I think overall, awesome destroyer to take. Now, one of the most annoying tier 10 destroyers when it comes to random battles has become kind of a, a, a rarely seen destroyer and kind of annoying destroyer. This is a ship that you can only bring if you are running two destroyers. You need one to kind of spot in this. You're basically taking an annoying flanking cruiser, kind of like the Henry IV. Uh, you're going to be flanking with this ship since its speed is so high then you have the ability to kind of get some damage downside is your range a good clan is just going to absolutely smoke you with this multiple moscos focusing on a cab is just going to absolutely obliterate this ship your detection's crazy high uh, i mean a des moines and a zao can almost outspot you if you're going to be running rudder shift instead of concealment so um being very careful with this ship it does have its ability but you're basically filling a cruiser role when it comes to this ship so kind of loses some of its uh, amazingness that it gets in randoms um still kind of useful though i think when you get to the top tier it's not going to be used that much so the cab is still strong but why take a cab when you could take a hindi why take a cab when you could take a moskva um and just have the one destroyer this is basically for a two uh, two dd team and I just don't think it's strong enough to really take over that. Although I still think it's the third strongest destroyer. Now, this one kind of fought me a little bit for taking third or fourth. Now, the Shima is is still a good ship in random. Um, relatively low detection. Its ability to... Its torps are going to hit the hardest out of all the ships at tier 10. I believe it's right up there with the highest damage. Um, uh, most are taking the 12-kilometer torps. The downside is most teams are going to have... Uh, sonar up the entire time yes you can throw a wall of torps out with 15 torps every little bit but the main thing you're going to be doing is kind of aerial denial with torpedoes and kind of corralling them so what do i mean by that you'll basically be launching one torp wait a little bit launching one set of torps wait a little bit launching one set of torps and kind of pushing the enemy team into a general area and maybe sending a torp here and there uh the the thing for me is if you do run into a destroyer, let's say a Z-52 or a gearing, you are going to be at a disadvantage. You're a bigger ship. You're not as agile as those ships, and you don't have the firepower to defend yourself like those ships do. And I just think with how much sonar and radar is out there, especially sonar, um, with it being a torp-heavy boat, you lose a lot of the ability to pump out damage on a consistent basis, and your smoke just isn't as good as the gearing, so really why take it? I think the Shima barely sticks on to a fourth place um compared to the cab um it's pretty close between those two one thing is if you are running one and the shim is the only thing you have you can still get some success out of it but it's just not as good as let's say the z52 or the gearing so shim number four i think is pretty standard and um i guess really the torque boat is, is it just isn't going to work for this season now a ship i actually really enjoy and i find very unique absolutely got wrecked when Warren Gaming announced there is no C uh, CVs this season. So what I mean by that is this ship is going to be the best out of any for being anti-air and taking out uh, planes in the sky. This thing is a perfect roll destroyer. I think could have been one of the strongest if you would have been running um, CVs this season. But since there is no CV, it's high AA, its ability to basically be a no-fly zone and protect your team is kind of non-existent and unusable. I think the grows away being one of the newer destroyers as well fewer people are going to have it so i guess it is kind of an upside but i just think the grows away isn't worth it there's no reason to take it it's russian smoke so it's going to be weaker it's torpy loads very long and most of the time you're going to be going guns on this thing if you want a gunboat destroyer take the z52 or the cab i guess grows away just isn't good enough in my opinion compared to the other choices to really even be used i think the shima is even better in the long run than this thing um you know your torps are all right but if you want torps take the shima it, I mean, faster torp reload on the Z2. I mean, it just doesn't bring anything to the table since it can't use its AA ability. So, really, the Grows Void, in my opinion, is the worst destroyer. And uh, I don't think I'll see one all season until it becomes, I think, one of the rentable ships. But, anyways, I love this ship in randoms because its ability to kind of troll the air. But when it comes to clan battles, I just don't think it's usable. I hate to say it, but I think the Grows Void is by far the worst destroyer at tier 10. 
So that all in all, guys, is going to be the breakdown for the Tier 10 ships for Clan Battles. Let me know in the comments below what you guys are running and seeing most common and which ones you are having. Now, this is going to be the breakdown for the most effective teams, I would say. Now, if you want to go have fun and play seven Shimakazes, go have fun. Go troll it. If you want to play seven Minokazes, or Minokazes, Minotaurs, go run that. Um, you know, have fun with it still. I mean, you need 30 wins in the uh, Typhoon League to get the Stalingrad flag. So it's going to be kind of difficult. And I just want you guys to have the best kind of outlook and the opportunity to get those wins. And taking the weaker ships is just going to make it a harder grind um, to get there. So hope this video helps you out, guys. Good luck in your clan battles. Let me know again how your clan battles are going and if you guys like this play mode, uh, this game mode, and if you guys like playing the clan battles. Um, that's it for me, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Remember to like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.